Join us today on Walk with History as we explore the Buffalo Bill Cody Museum outside of Denver, Colorado. Cody Museum and Grave, just outside of uh, Denver, Colorado. William Cody was born in Iowa in 1846, and his family moved to Kansas when he was eight. Now, Kansas at the time, in the 1850s, is bleeding Kansas, where they're fighting between is it going to be a free state or is it going to be a pro-slavery state? And Cody's father was uh, anti-enslavement and he got in a fight with somebody because he was very vocal about his, his ideals. Of, and somebody stabbed him with a Bowie knife, looking quite like this. And his father would die when Cody was young, 11 years old. He became the man of the house. And so at 11, he has, he has five sisters and he's the man of the house now and he needs to go out and make a living. And what he does is he goes to the wagon trains and he helps kind of wrangle their horses and help them along. And he proves to be very valuable when they need protection because he's so accurate with his rifle. And he makes a lot of money and he's able to support his family because of his accuracy with his rifle. Accompany wagon trains along the way, hunting the buffalo for, like I said, for the railroad workers. And he really does become a man of the West and he becomes really good friends with Wild Bill Hickok. So it, he, they really did form a close friendship between the two of them. Hickok was about nine years older than him. Hickok's 20 when he's 11, but they really, Hickok sees something in this young boy that is the real deal. And here's the Medal of Honor that Buffalo Bill received in uh, April of 1872, serving as a scout for the Army for four years. He helps to actually, you know, intercept American Indians. He actually kills a couple American Indians. He actually kills some American Indians that have killed, Amer that have killed homesteaders. So here's a buffalo, where Buffalo Bill Cody gets his name from hunting buffalo during the railroad. So he was paid to feed the railroad workers and he was paid a lot of money, $50 a month. And he was so accurate with a rifle. And that's what really built his name from a young age is his accuracy in sharpshooting. And he killed a lot of buffalo. Now he always regretted the amount of buffalo that he killed, but this is how he gets the name Buffalo Bill Cody. Uh, and they have a depiction of a buffalo here. How close you have to be to actually shoot and kill a buffalo. You can't really shoot them from far away because their hides are so thick, but you really have to get close to them. And then if you spook them or scare them, of course they're going to charge. Bill make the jump from being a real frontiersman to being a scout to Showtime. It was Ned Buntline. When Ned Buntline came to the West to write stories about the West, he met Cody and he wanted to write a story about Cody. And it was that story and it was a dime novel that really popularized the West and Buffalo Bill Cody's name. And there were a lot of other characters, but they just couldn't make the transition from real life to entertainment like Buffalo Bill did. And Buffalo Bill was willing to go on stages and talk about what he had done and do the showmanship of it and give the theatrics. And this is where he makes this jump from real life frontiersman to an actual show business showman.
Talk Like Girl Cody is very much about diversity and showing people the world and what's out there and all the rough riders around the world. So we have, he was just very much about inclusive and spotlighting and showing all the different types of people and rough riders and uh, explorers from different countries and different areas and different names. showman what is another thing that's cool about Buffalo Bill Cody is he's a showman and he's the real deal he actually did protect wagon trains from the time of being 11 years old he actually did ride on the Pony Express he actually did shoot Buffalo he actually was a scout for the Union Army in the Civil War he actually was a scout after the Civil War uh, in the West and he actually did all these things, and he actually did them very well. And one of the things about Buffalo Bill Cody that most people don't realize is just how influential he was with women and diversity. So Annie Oakley was paid as much as the men were paid to do the show. He thought she was very important to include in the show. And he also made sure to have representation of all the different indigenous groups in his show. And they were also all paid the same amount of money. So Buffalo Bill Cody was really an entrepreneur and an open, a free thinker, and at the time, a leader when it comes to diversity. And most people really don't know that about him, but it is something that he, uh, was important to him. The little sure shot. So that was the name given to Phoebe Ann Moses, better known as Annie Oakley, by Sitting Bull. did so much for the American Indian. I mean, he fought with the American Indian. He actually killed a couple American Indians. But in his show, he felt like there's, you cannot show the West without showing the American Indian and their way of life. And it was very important to him to have representation of American Indians in his show. And they were paid the same wage as the, their white counterparts. So again, Buffalo Bill Cody, what he does for diversity cannot be ignored. when his wife and daughter had died and his family said maybe his body should be moved to Cody, Wyoming. And people had at that time said we should move him there. It's where his namesake is. It's where he, he loved Cody, Wyoming. It's named after him. But he wanted to be buried here. And he is buried here. There's no reason to believe that he's not buried here. There is controversy around it, but like I said, they opened the coffin right before they lowered the coffin. He's buried on June 3rd of 1917. At last, Buffalo Bill is laid to rest. Approximately 25,000 people pass his coffin. It lays in the rotunda at the Colorado State Capitol. And then he's buried June 3rd, 1917 on Lookout Mountain. And he spent his last days in his, at his sister's house. And on January 10th, 1917, one day after he was baptized, he dies. My back is broke, my head is numb. This new generation's making me feel old and dumb. The road is dark, but I can't see. And he tells his wife that he remembers the beautiful lookout from Lookout Mountain here in Colorado, and that's where he would like to be laid to rest. And this is where she buries him in June. He dies in January, January 10th, and the ground is frozen. So she buries her, him here in June, opens the coffin so everyone can see him buries him, he's under concrete, he's covered by a fence, and then the controversy of people in Cody 
want him there, and that's always been a dispute, but there's no reason to believe that he's not actually here at Lookout Mountain. I'll take my body, but I'll never take my soul. Take my body, but I'll never take my soul. And I will walk till I fall. To my knees until my heart stops, until it starts to bleed. My heart will always be in bed.